Welcome back to Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. I'm Jacob, and this video covers IIMC, or Inadvertent Instrument Meteorological Conditions, also referred as double IMC or punching into the clouds. Now, these are big words, simply in context, or simple in context to understand, but a frequent cause of pilot and passenger deaths year after year in both planes and helicopters. Uh, it was also what was determined to have happened to the pilot flying the helicopter that Kobe Bryant and his family were in, uh, which resulted in all of their deaths. But let's break down what is IIMC in this video. Now, weather varies day by day, hour by hour, in all parts of the world. In aviation, this affects visibility and um, generally the weather that you're flying in. So imagine you're flying in, say, this example, where you're flying above the ground here, you've got your helicopter, there's some sort of low ceiling or low cloud deck, and there's some sort of degraded visual environment, so say rain or some sort of moisture out there uh, causing reduced visibility. It could be rain, snow, fog, or other types of precipitation. So not the best conditions. So you're trying to get from A all the way to B in this condition in your helicopter, but the weather's getting worse or you just found yourself in a bad situation. So what do pilots do in this situation? Well, a few different options here. Some fly slower and lower, uh, but you risk running into hazards. So you may get slower, lower, but there could be something like a tower over here that you could hit. There could be rising terrain. There could be anything up ahead of you and you're just kind of pressing into a, um, a hazardous situation here. Antennas, wires, anything. Um, others may try to, say, maintain altitude and just kind of press forward, hoping to get where they need to go. Once again, the same hazards could be likely as you get into this uh, degraded visual environment as you go forward through this precipitation. Uh, but your visibility generally getting less and less or just not improving. But in either of these examples, it can get to the point where weather hits you and all of a sudden, boom, you have a complete loss of visual references. It might have been another cloud bank here that you just didn't see and then now the helicopter just went into it. Uh, but imagine driving in your car in the rain and then all of a sudden somebody just throws a bag over your head and now you are now inadvertent instrument meteorological conditions. That is a condition where the only safe way to fly is 100% reliant on cockpit instruments and instrument navigation because you've lost all visual cues or there are no visual cues that you can use for navigation. So the things that kind of contribute to this situation are one, low or degrading ceilings. Another one is low or degrading visibility. And then what happens is there's an unexpected event. All of a sudden now, these two things have caught up to you. You've had unexpectedly uh, gone into the clouds or unexpected uh, loss of visibility and it's not coming back, or it's very unlikely to come back. <clears throat> uh, so this is incredibly dangerous. One, because not every pilot is trained or rated or equipped to fly in this condition, that is instrument conditions. Second, it's unexpected, so the pilot wasn't ready to respond. The NTSB, that's the National Training uh, Safety Board, did a su survey that found that only 14% of pilots survived entering IIMC conditions. And the most dangerous point is those first 30 seconds of entering the conditions because that's when aviators are the most prone to becoming spatially disoriented. So during this time, the body is completely confused. You've lost all visual reference points. Um, you're just kind of getting whatever you feel in the aircraft and it may feel like you're turning or diving or climbing uh, when in fact you could be doing the exact opposite. You can get so lost in this event and so disoriented so fast to the point that you just crashed the helicopter despite nothing being mechanically wrong with the helicopter. In the case of Kobe's pilot, he was flying um, through a pass with some rising terrain. When the pilot became inadvertent IMC, the aircraft first began to climb, um, started to turn to the left, and then eventually became an unrecognized left spiraling dive that came back towards the ground and crashed with the pilot not really having any type of visual references until the last second or two, but at that point it was too too late to recover. So with all visual reference points lost, the pilot just didn't notice what had become to the attitude or the, um, the flight path of the aircraft and it crashed into the train. So what happens if you find yourself in inadvertent IMC? Well, hopefully you've received at least some sort of simulator training because knowing what to do and actually doing it is very different, especially if you've never practiced it, the likelihoods of recovering are pretty slim. 
but generally speaking, you'll have to first transition to the instruments. So we'll kind of outline these right here as recovery. First is transition to the instruments. So I'm no longer looking outside at this point. I am transitioning to the instrument page. So my attitude indicator, I'm gonna level the wings, zeroing out the pitch, zeroing out the roll, kind of neutralizing the helicopter. I wanna establish some sort of safe heading. <clears throat> this instruments that should have been attitude, put that in there. Um, heading, I wanna turn only to avoid known obstacles. Otherwise I don't wanna induce any kind of turns because it could make me confused. But if I know there's an obstacle off the nose, I might wanna turn. Uh, next, I want to pull in some sort of climb power and airspeed. I want to get this thing in a flyable condition, and I want to get climbing above all the obstacles. Uh, I want to continue this uh, cross-check throughout the entire, uh, really, the remainder of flight. Keep in mind, the first 30 seconds of entering this condition is the most dangerous and the most likely to crash. But I want to continue this check Level the wings, good climb, I'm getting up to a safe altitude, heading's good, power's good, airspeed's good. Just continue that cross check and recover. Once I have the aircraft under control, then I can contact ATC, that's air traffic control, for guidance and try to get back to a safe uh, situation. But the best technique is really to avoid these conditions to begin with. So there's a few ways that we can avoid inadvertent IMC. First one being in the pre-mission or the planning phase. <clears throat> Um, so establish before I even fly um, what the weather is going to be. So preferably get a weather brief at the takeoff place, the, um, the landing place, and anything in route. I want to know what the weather is going to be. And then I want to establish some sort of go or no-go criteria. Hey, if the visibility is less than two miles, I'm not going to go. Or if it's ceilings less than 800 feet, I'm not going to go because I need to go through the mountain pass but establish some sort of minimum criteria that you will or won't even launch for. Next, study the MSAs in the area. That's the minimum safe altitude. So in case you do punch into the clouds, what altitude is gonna clear you? It could be 3,000 foot, 4,000, 5,000, 8,000, whatever it is for your area. What altitude is gonna clear you of all the terrain and obstacles? So at least if you lose all visual references, you can go to that and know you're not gonna hit anything. Uh, next one is review the instrument approaches for the area. <clears throat> Um, know how to execute those Im instrument approach charts, know how to read them. Um, that is, given you're an in instrument rated and equipped aviator. Also, on the good weather days, you should be practicing those so that the first time you see them isn't going to be on a bad weather day. But that's going to be the kind of the pre-mission. What happens if you encounter this while in flight? Um, so you have a few different options here. <clears throat> If you encounter degrading weather conditions that maybe weren't or weren't or were or were not predicted, I can either turn around if I have the terrain and the time that permits. I could land uh, or I could go ahead and transition to the instruments or transition to instrument flight. So first one, uh, turn around. That's w whether the, the weather permits it. Land, it's never really a popular uh, decision to just land in a random field or somebody's backyard, but I'd rather land and fight another day than punch in the clouds and crash and be dead that afternoon. Next is transition to instruments. So if I know that I'm going to go into these conditions, and, you know, it's kind of forcing my hand and I'm equipped and rated, I may just go ahead and transition to the instruments now instead of it being an unexpected event later. But I want to, at all costs, avoid scud running. Scud running is just kind of skimming underneath the cloud layers, hoping that I can get through, because that's when I'm really risking either hitting an obstacle or eventually having that unexpected event where I punch into the clouds. But that's about all the time I have for this topic. Uh, I want to stress the importance of it again, because this kills more pilots year after year than things like mechanical failures. Uh, but if you found this video informative, be sure to hit like and subscribe below, and as well as leave a comment. Thanks again for watching. As always, I'm Jacob, and this is Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. Safe flying.